Hello friends, welcome to another video. This is part third of the multiple total columns in the matrix video. Uh, in the previous video in part two, I showed how we can select a single month in a slicer and go back six months, take the average, uh, calculate uh, the most recent sales and compare it with the average. And uh, in this video, we are going to uh, go through the solution where uh, in part two video, we have done the calculation, the same calculation at the multiple places and how we can avoid that. Uh, let me actually give a quick rundown what I'm talking about and then we will look into the solution. Uh, if you remember, do check out part one and part two video. The link for those videos is in the description of this video. Um, so if you remember, um, going back to, uh, if we created a calculation item called CG trend new. So we have two calculation item called trend and then the most recent month versus um, average. So in the trend, what we have is we we are, if, if we're looking at the data at the month level, we are calculating the month range and then um, uh, select whatever the measure we're using. And now this code is used once here, uh, second time here, and then third, th third time here. So this code has been used three times. So in case we have to make a change in this code for whatever the business logic change is required, we need to make the at three different places. So that's the uh, one, one thing we want to avoid so we can have the calculation at one place and reuse it again and again so that any future change can be done at one single place. Similarly, uh, the average is calculated here and average is also calculated here so this is done twice as well so we can avoid that as well in case there is a change in the average that uh, we can uh, uh, we can do at one single place and one more thing which i'm going to do in this video is uh, if you guys remember in the first video i mentioned that we have when we are calculating average we are using two columns current uh, summarizing on two columns calendar month and calendar month sort and the reason why we're doing that is month column is sorted by the month sort, sort column. And uh, um, John, again, as I mentioned, is a Power BI community super user. He mentioned in one of my, uh, my video that I can avoid that by adding a month column, a date column, month and date column in my calendar table and then use that in my calculations. We will also implement that in this video and see how does that work. So let's first make uh, the changes that we don't have to do this calculation again and again at multiple places, but done at the one single place. Um, to do so, what we will do is I will add another calculation group here. Uh, let's call that calculation group, uh, uh, calculation group trend calculations. I'm gonna hide this because this is just for the internal purpose. We are not going to visualize it anywhere. So I'm just gonna go and make it invisible. And I'm gonna add two calculation items to this. One is value and other one will be average. So what we're gonna do in the value, we are going to um, take our calculation, which we already done on the trend one, we're gonna take this calculation. Uh, all this fun stuff. So we go into the value. So what we're gonna do here is, so we're, we're putting our logic to calculate which month we want to see. So basically uh, number of months is minus six and then all the same logic. So this is what our first calculation is. So this is our value calculation. So now what I can do is, let's first see how, does, how it will work. Let me apply these changes. Go back to Power BI model and refresh now. Perfect. So let's come back to our, so what we're gonna do is wherever we are making this particular calculation, instead of writing this calculation, we can uh, use this pre, uh, another calculation group and uh, this calculation item. So let me go back to CG trend new and then go in the trend what we can do is we can replace this we're going to say where calculation whatever the new um, 
calculation group we created it's called cg trend calculations and the column name is name and the value is going to be value okay perfect so now what we're seeing here is uh, go and call this particular calculation item in the CG trend calculations uh, and that is with where calculation item is equal to value and in the value we have our logic in place so if I apply this change now here you go so now this is working perfectly fine no of course end result will not change but my calculation group uh, value calculation is in one single place I can replace it now everywhere wherever I have this so what I'm going to do here is apply it in two different places what we're doing is we're using it here and we can apply it here so that's that code so we don't need to this is perfect so this is our average i'm going to take that and i'm going to we have the average calculation here the same code we're going to remove this with this new one so now we have replaced our calculation at the three different places so now if i go this is uh, some error what is that uh, i don't need this i guess okay perfect see here perfect this is good so now if we go back everything should work so here you go now the beauty of this thing is as I said if let's say we go from six months to nine months or whatever and uh, I know I can put a parameter and then change it there but I just want to show you guys here now I will make this change at one single place let's say I want to go with the three months and apply this change and everything will work for three months now because this should show three months and average will be three months and the most recent so here you go so one single change so what we're doing is we put our logic for calculating how many months we want to see in one single place and calling it everywhere and everything is working perfectly fine this this is amazing now uh, one more thing i want to improve on that if you want to if you guys noticed if we go in a trend here in our calculation we have an average this one logic here and then we also have the average logic here. So we are doing the average logic in two different places. We can also improve on this. So what we can do is I'm gonna go into my, let's get the calculation for the average first. So this is our average calculation. So I'm gonna grab that. In my calculation item, my uh, CG trend calculation, I'm gonna add another one called average and put it in here. So this is my average logic. So I'm putting it in one single place. Now, once I have this, let's apply the changes. I think I have to go back to the model and refresh now. Here you go. So that's whatever uh, changes has been applied. The, of course, the end result is not going to change. So now we have a single average calculation and single value calculation. So now coming back to trend, what I need to do here is I don't need to write this average calculation here what I can do is I can just grab this code calculate one and replace average one with that and instead of value I'm gonna say it average remove this and here go to my most recent month again the average one replace this okay so our average calculation is one single place number of months we want to see is in one single place and we're just recalling that calculation at the multiple places so now if i apply these changes everything should work the result is going to remain the same now i'm not uh, making changes at the multiple places so i'm i just made the change if i need to make a change i will make at one place so for if i want to go more than three months i want to go nine months i just change at one place now average calculation and number of months we are seeing they automatically here you go so now we are seeing nine months we can have a what if parameter where we can ask users select number of months you're going to pick three six nine twelve whatever it's up to you guys and the calculation and what we will do is we will take that parameter value 
and uh, use it here and replace it with number of months and that that should work um, and for average we are also because re reusing the value function now as I said uh, one thing which I in my average calculation I'm using two columns current month calculate calendar month and calendar month sort and uh, we're going to improve our calendar table add a new column in there and then use that one single column uh, for 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 our calculation so uh, let's do that let's add a column in our calendar table and call it end of month date which will be simply end of month i think that's the function and the calendar date and zero zero means how many months you want a positive or negative so this is this will give us the end of month date for each each date so that's um, that's what we need and one of the things our month is uh, we are seeing it as a mmm dash yyy so i can change the format of this so let's change it to date and maybe change the format to it we can directly type it in here this is one of the tip I shared a uh, long time ago. This could be MMM dash YYY. Let's see. And we can actually see it in the preview of the table. Let's see what does that look like. Here you go. It's show January and we are getting the result. So now instead of using my existing month, I can use this end of month date column. Uh, on my video here so I'm gonna instead of month I'm gonna use that okay so I'm getting the same result so this is good do we have to change anything and also going back to our average calculation here instead of summarizing because I'm summarizing on the two different columns I'm gonna uh, now I can use values of calendar and of month date that's our new column and that should do it so of course the result is not going to change it's still going to same perfect let's uh, reduce the number of months back to um, three months so that we can check the calculations are working so apply the changes okay here you go so what we have here is uh, three months three nine so this is the average 414 seems correct and then what we have is the delta which is also correct I hope you from these three videos you learned some tricks some some new things about relationship model calendar uh, calculation groups and uh, metrics visual enhancements and um, do let me know what you guys think uh, really appreciate your feedback and constructive feedback doesn't matter what it is please share your feedback and do let me know what else you want to uh, have video on and I will be more than happy to do so and make sure to share my channel with your friends and do subscribe so that you are notified when the new videos come out once again thanks for watching and looking forward to share more videos with all of you thank you have a good day bye for now